Once he made his decision to join the church, you could see a marked difference in, in his groundedness. I think prior to that, Barack was searching for himself, both himself in the African-American community, but also himself in the faith community. I, I think it had real value and real meaning to him. I got a letter. I was in Germany studying. And the letter, I looked at the sender, and it was Barack Obama. And the thing that really startled me when I got the letter was that he had, it had the same handwriting as my father's. And my father used to write to me. And, you know, so I was like, what is going on? This is like, I don't know, two years or three years after my father's died. So I opened the letter, kind of feeling really strange. And it turns out to be Barack Obama Jr. I grew up knowing that I had a brother in Hawaii because my father was very proud of him. His mother always sent Barak's school results. So we knew about him. But as a child, you don't really relate. We got to meet each other in Chicago, finally. We uh, decided on that, we need to get to know each other. And immediately it was like, this is somebody I've known all my life. And we didn't stop talking for about two days. He asked me so many questions about family, about his father, in particular about his father. I think it was a big hole in his life. We don't know the reasons why his father couldn't see him more, be around him more, but I could at least relate to him that your father loved you very, very much. He came and visited me in Kenya, and in that time we continued talking. Although I couldn't fill this hole that Barak had lived with all his life, I could reduce it because it was filled with family and stories that were not just made up. And I think that was something that he needed to have and it helped in his development and what he was trying to do with his life. We were taking a walk and he said, I've decided to uh, go to law school. I said, okay. And that's reasonable. Why? You know, and uh, uh, he talked about power, that uh, he didn't see having the, getting enough power to change things uh, through community organizing. He wanted to have some kind of platform to be able to create greater change. I was 27 when I got to law school. It meant that I had gotten a lot of errant uh, energy out of the way. <laughs> I knew why I was there and what I wanted to get out of it. When I first met him, he seemed he was a black guy from Chicago with this African sounding name. And I had no idea of his unusual background. He had a very sort of wise presence about him. He always had something that was a little different to say that seemed a bit more well thought out than the other students. I had learned as an organizer to be able to articulate a position and express myself. And I had great enthusiasm for the subject matter. And I think when you're interested in something, you end up uh, doing well. And I ended up elected as the first African-American president of the Law Review at Harvard. It was obvious from the beginning that Barack was going to be a formidable candidate just impressed people around him. But when Barack was elected, I frankly was, was a bit surprised. Race was a huge issue in the Harvard Law Review as it was everywhere else in the society. And everybody understood that this was gonna be a huge symbol. I think it's a good sign. I think it's a sign of progress. Although I'm honored, and I think people can uh, say that my election symbolizes some progress, at least in, within the small confines of the legal community. I think it's real important to keep the focus on uh, the, the broader world out there and, and see that uh, uh, for a lot of kids, uh, the doors that have been open to me aren't open to them.